Okay everybody, I did the one on the A1 Skywriter, so I've been playing around. I moved the module over here to the 1700mm um, FMS Mustang that I've been working on for a while that I repainted up in the Obsession paint scheme. And thought I'd give you a little demo of some of the sounds that I'm playing with. Not that this is the final thing that I'm going to be doing, but uh, just some of the uh, tinkering projects that I've been with and kind of give you... Uh, a view on it. I know some of the guys wanted to see this, but and I was playing around with some of the switch positions. As you can see with the radio here, I've actually hooked up the, I'm using the throttle as, uh, or the throttle input on a switch, throttle to input on a switch, excuse me, to activate some of the sounds that are set with an offset along with another switch here and a two position switch here and then the spring loaded switch. I think I have nine sounds in here and I'll, I'll walk through these sounds and then do the motor sounds with you. This does have the Merlin in it, which I call the Merlin 3. It's actually the third revision of one we kind of came up with here. Um, David actually sent this to me and then I played around with it, but he kind of tweaked it up for me a little bit and then I've done a little bit more to it. But anyway, we'll walk through the sounds here and I'm gonna use the one switch to do it. And like, like David was showing here, if I hold it and then let it go, it's momentary. But if I give it a quick latch, it's latched. And then I have to repeat it to take it off. And that's kind of a real quick explanation of the momentary and latch. I'll do that again, just using sound one that I've got in here. If I hold it, as long as I hold it, the sound plays. As soon as I let it go, the sound quits, no matter where it's at in the loop. But if I give it a quick flip, it activates it, it'll stay looped through the whole cycle. And then I have to hit it again to do that. And if I hit it while it's playing in that loop sound and I hit it twice, it'll play the next sound and start to overlap them. So, quick explanation there. David was right on the money. I kind of got to understand it better, but... We'll walk through the sounds here. I'll do the nine auxiliary sounds outside of the motor, and then I'll do the motor sound. Uh, three machine guns here. Uh, here's the first machine gun. Second machine gun. And this third machine gun I made myself last night. It's a little deeper, I actually call it my cannon. And then the fourth sound, and I don't know what order these are, so I'm listening to them as much as you are here. I can't remember the orientation on them. Whoop. Four. Two bomb drop sounds. That's five. Uh, I believe the next one is my Stuka. And then I've got radio chatter. After this one. Oh yeah, my music. I tried loading a music file and it'll actually play it for background music. Mission Impossible thing. Okay, and 
enough of that. And I believe that was the last sound set and loop that I've got there. Uh, on the, I ha also have this on my momentary switch, and it'll default as soon as I press it once to the fourth sound, which I believe is the first bomb sound. I have two optional bomb sounds. And then turn it back off so that when I'm flying, because my plane does have operational bomb drop on the pylons, I can actually drop my ordnance off. And I've dropped the drop tanks, I've got a set of bombs, and I can drop them off, pick a one off one wing, and then pick a one off the other wing here. Go ahead and put the gear down here. So I do have scale cycling doors on this. And I also have a set of sounds I've played with on the Retract channel using it that actually simulates the uh, real P-51 doors going up and down and the hydraulics working that I've also played with on the flap channel so it sounds like the, like the flaps are coming down under heavy hydraulics. So anyway, here's the sound of the Merlin, the Merlin 3. Start up. some of the settings on the loop points to help it spin down. Now I do have to power it up real quick to give the propeller some momentum and then shut it back down. And actually Eddie on the RC Groups gave me that idea and it worked real well. If I just shut it down from a dead idle, the prop will actually quit before the sound is finished playing. It kind of looks a little out of sync. But I've got the start up about right here and we'll do that one more time. second and a half in different increments and blended together so it was still smooth uh, so that it would kind of match the propeller rotation and the motor rotation 
was the best timing that I come down with, but I did have to give it just a little rev up, like I'm clearing the spark plugs, and then shut it, and then let the build up momentum on the rotation there, and which gives it more time. It takes it longer to spin down, which will actually match closer to the sound file without clipping it too much. Anyway, there you go. There's the Mustang. Gear up. My door's actually come back down. And synchronize and close in right behind the main doors. I also have the vent drop, which you can't see from this video here in the back. It's controlled, but I can actually control my uh, cooling vent in the back manually. Or to flip a switch and it's synchronized to the propeller so it'll actually open when it starts to overheat and let more air out the back which will cause a greater vacuum up the front scoop here to draw in when that's back and it takes pressure off the canopy from blowing out even though I have two N50 magnets up here now to help hold this on and that's it so anyway she's just about done I'll take the camera off here and we'll do a quick walk around let that all kind of cool down since I had it up there static and it does tend to get a little warm when I'm running it like that but see if I can make this a smooth transition give you a walk around of my Mustang here anyway uh, went, went through some extensive detail to deal at, detail at the cockpit that's one of my pilots that I did uh, the only other one I've done is for V8 which I think people have probably seen on the groups but uh, kind of really went through and detailed the cockpit out with the newer pilot looking guy there with the helmet on instead of the World War, World War II. But I was real pleased with this one. I uh, did a little more detailing on the back to bring up some realism on it and so forth. Still have a little bit of work to do here. All these graphics are done by Cali Graphics. She did an excellent job. Instead of actually painting the D-Day stripes this time, these are actually Cali graphics. These aren't painted on like they were before. <clears throat> kind of a back view here. And the scoop I was talking about. This scoop right here I can actually manually control. I got it open now to help lick some cooling out of here. I have two four inch speakers mounted in this. I had it blocked up here to kind of keep it off of the wings, but we'll take it out right here. Some more detailed pictures from the bottom, which I posted earlier on the groups, but there's the first four inch RS10 speaker right there. And then right up in that first part of the silver area is the nose speaker, which is also a four inch. These two speakers are, in, are wired in series. Uh, driving off of uh, David's SFX7 module I have. And so forth. The next thing I'll be doing is I'm actually working on right now using the PMW outputs on the SFX module and I'm going to put LEDs in the lights so they'll actually sync with the machine gun sounds pull the hatch here real quick and so you can kind of see what's under the hood here as you can see the SFX module there blinking I've got it set on velcro I'll pull that out disconnect these connections which I already have another set in the A1 Sky Raider and simply plug this into the A1 Sky Raider change out this SD card to the card that I had in the last video with the A1 Sky Raider which I'm using the Falk Wolf 190 sound and it's ready to go with a quick change out. It takes me about a minute using a uh, EMS sequencer here on my bigger birds to sequence the gear doors on the P51 style. Works really well. Um, and I'm using two 3S batteries. I've done some modifications up under the hood on this guy. So I got a lot more room and cooling up underneath there. And you might be able to see the wooden box, the lip of it there, part of it right below my finger there. That's actually the rear speaker. I can't seem to get a good shot here of the vent. But maybe if you look down through those wires right there, let me see if I can zoom in on it. Uh, 
Uh, you can't see it, but if you look behind there, I've actually got. Let's see if I can move them here. The top right there, I have vent holes in the top of the box. I'm actually yeah, there's a little better view of it. Uh, I'm actually gonna. I tried that first, but I'm actually gonna take that hole and blow it open. I do have R9 insulation inside the box on both these speakers, just to see how how it would affect the sound a little bit. And I didn't notice too much, but I did want to try it. But I'm going to make that hole bigger, as I found out, and actually a pure open hole with a tube in it. I'm using a rocket tube that goes inside of it, a big rocket tube. And it kind of gives it a little deeper bass sound when I do that, as I found out from the other one. But that's how it's done. The front speaker is done the same way. And when I disconnect it here, let me put this camera down for a second here. And I'll pull the battery, and we can get a better shot of the front front speaker because it's a lot more visible. Okay, there we go. There you can see the speaker box with the peppered hole right in the front of it, which I just did with the drill, and up in the battery bay, which I hollowed out. Originally, the battery sit will sit used to sit a lot further forward but now we'll sit further backwards to help balance it better to the CG but I can put a pretty good size battery in the nose of this plane as opposed to what it did before which I did here a while back this, this winter but that hole is going to get changed from a pepper hole that I've got done right now zoom in on it a little bit there and I'm actually going to make that one solid big hole that hole right there actually it's pumping air from the back of the speaker which is blowing directly up on the battery which sits right over the top of it and it actually helps cool the battery it doesn't block any of the normal cooling that was built into the airplane because it's nice and level with it but the air being pumped from the back of the box that comes out through the hole also pumps into the fuselage here and subsequently helps cool all the electronics in here and the battery i was very surprised as an added benefit when I did that I was like hey that's pretty nice so anyway there you guys go that was my Mustang that I've been working on with the module two planes with it I got some others that I'm going to be doing and this is actually my third 1700 millimeter FMS and done up in the obsession scheme still a few more markings that I'm uh, contemplating putting on her and then the next one, which I actually have a Bendini in right now, is that red, silver and red 1700mm uh, Mustang that I did up in a B version. It has a Bendini in it with two 3-inch speakers mounted in the exact same location this one does. And I'm looking to change that out. I did a quick video on it. It'll be the next plane up on the workboard along with that one right there. The 1400 millimeter BF 109 Measure Schmidt. Need to close her up to keep dust out of her. She's the next one for a sound mod right there. There you guys go. Hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. I'll put up some more later as I get them made. Have a good day. Great flying, guys.